Hello humans, Artist with the Fro here, and welcome back to the show. I figured I'd take the moment to show you some of the other decks that I do run, aside from the sealed only deck that we have, and the Samorg deck that we made last time. Before we actually start the video, thank you guys for all the feedback that you gave me in the Samorg video. There were a lot of rulings that I did miss, um, and I don't want to give anybody any misinformation if they're trying to build the deck as there is new support coming out in Dual Overload. So, we're going to try to see if we can go as close to the letter and have the correct rulings for this deck because this is actually one of my more favorite types of decks, a Fortune Lady Nordic deck. So, um, yeah, let's just break down into the monsters. So starting off first, we have Fortune Lady Past. And one of the Fortune Lady effects that's consistent through all of them is that every standby phase, their level increases by one. Now their attack points also depend on the different type of Fortune Lady. For Fortune Lady Past, she actually gains 200 attack per level. So she starts off at 200, and then the next standby phase, if she survives, she gets to 400. But you're not necessarily gonna keep her on the field for too long, because her other effect states that you can target one Fortune Lady card on the field, including herself, and then banish a number of cards from either your hand or field, and once those cards are banished, the Fortune Lady monster gains levels equal to that equal to the amount of cards that you have banished. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, combos that I would say that we're going to jump into. Um, but this is kind of like the one bread and butter. We only run it at one. It's only necessary to have it at one with this type of deck. So we got the one Fortune Lady pass. Coming up next, we have the kind of like bread and butter of the actual deck, Fortune Lady Light, another 200 one star uh, light spellcaster monster. Um, every turn, of course, gains 200 attack by gaining a level. Its effect basically states if this card is removed from the field, you get to special summon a Fortune Lady card from your deck. So, if you've been paying attention, we banish Fortune Lady Light with Fortune Lady Pass, and we're able to special summon another Fortune Lady monster. Very helpful, especially in summoning the next Fortune Lady card that we have, Fortune Lady Fire. Now this one again starts off with 200, so she's actually beginning with 400 attack, Fire, fel uh, fire Spellcaster card. Um, when this card is special summoned by a Fortune Lady's effect, i.e. Fortune Lady Light, she gets to target one card on the field on your opponent's side, target one monster, and destroy it, and that uh, opponent takes damage equal to that monster's attack. So a really good burn. Um, aside from her being a level 2, she is also good to help Synchro Summon, which is one thing I forgot to mention, is that Past is a tuner. Keep that in mind as well. Moving on to the next Fortune Lady that we run, we have one Fortune Lady Water. When she's special summoned, you actually get to draw two cards. However, she has to be special summoned while you control another Fortune Lady monster on the field. So, you have multiple ways of doing that with Past and Light. There are also some other combos, thanks to the new Fortune Lady support that was received in Rising Rampage, that will actually boost up this deck even more. Moving on to the last Fortune Lady card that we're running, we have two copies of Fortune Lady Dark. Now again, now one of the differences as I mentioned before is that the Fortune Ladies gain levels, however some of them gain different types of levels. So for Fire, Light, and Past, they all gain 200 based off of their levels. For Water, she actually gains 300, so she's starting off with 12. And for Dark, she gains 400, so she's starting off with 2000. Now what Dark kind of does is very important for the deck, but it's not as useful as it used to be. When she's on the field, if a Fortune Lady card or a Fortune Lady monster destroys another monster by battle, you get to special summon one Fortune Lady monster from your graveyard to the field. It's a good way to bring out water. It's also another good way to bring back the tuners as well. And keep in mind, Fortune Lady Dark does not have to be the card that destroys the other card by battle. As long as you have another Fortune Lady on the field and that card battles the monster, and it destroys it, you can special summon another fortune lady from your graveyard. A really good out, but really, when we think about dark, she's kind of used for the synchro summoning. Now, that's going to do it for the fortune lady monsters that we're running, so keep that in mind. Going over to the other side of the engine, we are running three Diverg of the Nordic Alfar. Now, this card is basically your marauding captain. When it's normal summon, it lets you get an additional normal summon. Um, so you're basically able to summon another Nordic monster. There are a lot of Nordic cards that you are going to go for. However, with the new support again, with Rising Rampage and with Legendary uh, Duelist, you're actually only going for one card, which is the Link Monster. So we'll get into that. 
When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you get to add one card, uh, one Nordic Relic card from your graveyard, and add that back to your hand. There are no Nordic Relics that you're going to be running in here, but you can actually swap this out for a two of or a one of. There's a lot of one stars in here, so you're probably going to guess which type of exceeds we're going to be running, or which type of Link Monsters we're going to be running based off of what we have. Moving on to the new support, we're actually going to look at Alvis of the Nordic Alfar. Now, again, this is another card that came out in uh, Soul Fusion, I believe. And what this card basically states is that when it's summoned, um, sorry, when it's banished by the effect of a Nordic Link monster, which kind of gives you a hint of what we're going to see uh, soon, you can send to the graveyard one Nordic monster you control and two Nordic monsters from your deck whose levels equal 10, then special summon one Aesir monster, which is one of the synchros, um, from your extra deck. Now, for the beginning part of it, that first effect you're not necessarily going to use. You're really going to summon this monster with the Link monster that comes out afterwards, but there's a lot of sort of combos that you have to keep in mind, and I think we're going to save that for a second video just to show the differences between all of the information for the cards and the actual information for the combos that we're going to have. Now, the other effect that it has is actually a little bit more important. It's basically, while this card is in the graveyard, if an Aesir monster is removed from the field uh, or sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and then special summon another Aesir monster from your extra deck with a different name. You, only, you can only use that effect once per duel, so just keep that in mind as you, as you start sending more of these guys to the grave. And you're going to be sending them a lot to the grave using the next card that we have, Vanadis of the Nordic Ascendant. So another 4-star Fairy Tuner, actually our first Nordic Tuner if we're actually being uh, very specific, but one of the cards that you're definitely going to use for your outs. Um, Vanadis basically allows you to pitch one Nordic card from your deck to the graveyard, and her level changes to that Nordic monster's level. You can only use this card as a uh, Synchro Summon. Uh, you can substitute it for any Nordic Tuner, so you can basically summon any of the Aesir gods with Vanadis. She's a lot better than Valkyrie, so just keep that in mind. And she's a common too, so a lot of these cards are a lot cheaper than you would seem. Moving on to the last Nordic card that we're running, Servar Tolf of the Nordic Alfar, another five-star tuner. And you're going to see where we're going to have these two cards run in tandem if you check out the combo video that will be coming out right after this one. Now, a five-star tuner, basically when it's normal summoned, you get to add one Nordic card from your graveyard back to your hand. And you can sort of summon it first by having, of course, your Alfar, tribute it for, uh, sorry, summon your Diverg, tribute it for Svaltov, and then get Diverg back to your hand. But let's not go into combos because we want to save that for the next video. Moving on to the rest of the support, we're running two Necro Faces. When this card is normal summon, it returns all banished cards from both players removed from play zones back into the deck. When it, uh, when it does that, it actually gains 100 attack, so it starts off at 12, but if you're playing against Grand Maju, it's a good out because you basically get to send everything back, or if you're playing Grand Maju yourself, you're probably keeping this in your side deck, just maybe as a one of just to get all the cards that you might have gotten rid of. Um, its other effect states that if it's banished either from, uh, if, from the field, the deck, etc., you have to, both players have to banish 5 cards from the top of their deck. There's going to be a lot of banishing going along, especially with the next card that we have, Eater of Millions. Um, basically, this card, you uh, can only special summon it from your hand by banishing five or more cards from either your hand, field, and or extra deck face down. It gains 100 attack for each face down banished card, and when it attacks only once per turn, you get to uh, banish the card that it's attacking face down as well, if it battles. So keep that in mind, not only if it's attacking, but if it's actually getting attacked itself. Another 1-star, so keep in mind we're going to be doing a lot with these 1-star cards. Moving on to the last monster we have, a uh, Wind Dragon of Ross, Fear Mode, just to kind of like out the combo decks. Finally, moving on to spells, which should make this sort of uh, deck review go by a little bit faster. We're running two Fortune's Futures. It returns a banished Fortune Lady card from your graveyard, sorry, from your banished zone back to your graveyard and you draw two cards. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of banishing that we're doing. There's two Fortune Lady Callings. This basically lets you special summon one Fortune Lady monster from your deck with a different name than the Fortune Lady card that's on the field. However, once you do that, you are locked in to special summoning only synchro monsters from the extra deck. You can't go into this and then try to link summon, so on and so forth. And you can also only activate one Fortune Lady Calling once per turn. 
Moving on to the other uh, two sets, we have another two sets of Future Visions. Basically, when this card is on the field, if a monster is normal summoned, it gets banished, and then it returns during the person's or player's next standby phase. And finally, well, not really finally, but moving on to the last of our Fortune Lady cards, we're running two Future Visions, or Fortune Visions. This card allows you to search for any Fortune Lady card um, from your deck to your hand. So that includes the spell cards that we mentioned before, both Fortune Lady Calling and, oh sorry, not Fortune's Future. But there are some other Fortune Lady Trap cards that you want to keep in mind. Now this also has a few other added effects. If a card is banished uh, from your side of the field during your turn, then your cards cannot be destroyed by card effects. If a card is banished from your opponent's, uh, during your opponent's turn, then your cards cannot be destroyed, or rather the next battle damage that you take will become zero for that turn. We're running one Terraforming, one Twin Twisters, one Monster Reborn, of course, one Reinforcement of the Army for Deverg. He is a level one warrior monster. We're running one Burial of the Different Dimension just to return those extra cards, one Dark Hole, and one Gold Sark. Finally, to finish off the traps, just a little bit favorite of mine. I am running it. It's kind of trash, but you never know. It always kind of saves me in those moments. Two magic cylinders and two fortune lady rewinds. Another searchable card that you have with fortune vision. Um, this basically lets you target any number of banished fortune lady monsters in your graveyard with different names. Then you can special summon them, but you get but they basically have to be shuffled back into the deck during the end phase. Kind of your return from the different dimension. Now, moving on to what we actually have as our synchros, we're going to start off first with Ally of Justice Catastor, just an easy out, really cheap to get, especially now that uh, Dual Devastator is a thing. So basically, if it, if it battles any monster that's not dark, it destroys it uh, without applying damage calculation. Moving on to our actual kind of like key Fortune Lady Synchro card, we have Fortune Lady Every. Another Fortune Lady card, so that means that just like how it has various stars, it'll gain levels based on those stars. So she gains, uh, she gains about 400, so she's starting off with 2800. Now during your standby phase, uh, this card's level, of course, increases by one. When that, actually when that effect actually happens, you can banish one face-up monster your opponent controls, and then during the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one spellcaster monster from your graveyard and then special summon it. So basically you get the easy out if she's killed and then you get to kill kind of or banish the uh, opponent's monster during your turn. Black Rose, oop, I'll wait for it to kind of come in. Black Rose Dragon, cool story about this. I actually pulled it uh, from, it was one of the first synchros that I pulled out of a booster pack. Colossal Fighter. We're running Cyframe Lord Omega. You can out this for another 8-star if you want. Going into our first uh, Nordic Gods, or Aesir, we have two Lokis, Lord of the Aesir. This card is another level 10. Uh, keep that in mind, all of the Aesir monsters are level 10, and they all have various different effects. I would say Loki is kind of the weakest of the three, but it really depends on the type of situation that you're facing off against. If you're running, or if you're facing off against someone that has high back row uh, or rather high sort of like back row setups then you kind of want to have Loki as your out because when he attacks or when he declares an attack and your opponent activates a trap card you can negate one of those cards once per turn so it's a good kind of like bait out bait and switch and he works really well with the uh, the link monster that they have which we'll get to kind of at the end of the extra deck if he's destroyed or if he's sent to the graveyard then you can basically banish one Nordic Alfar card, which of course includes Deverg or Alvis, and you get to special summon him again during the end phase. When he's then special summoned, you can target one trap card and add it back to your hand. 3,300 attack, 3,000 defense. Moving on to Thor, again, another 10 star. He has a sort of different effect. When he's on the field once per turn, you can activate his effect and negate the effects of all other, uh, all face-up monsters your opponent controls. If he's removed from the graveyard or if he's sent to the graveyard, you can banish a Nordic Beast card and summon him back. And when you do, you can inflict 800 damage to your opponent. Finally, getting on to the Father Odin. Father of the Acer. I'll wait for it to focus. There we go. 4,000 attack, 3,500. I forgot to mention that. Uh, Thor is actually 3,500 there. 
but basically you're you're kind of bread and butter the card you're going to be going for most of the time while he's on the field you can activate his effect to make him unaffected by spell or trap cards during the turn until the end phase if he's removed or if he's sent to the graveyard uh, at the end of the phase, you can then banish one fortune, sorry, one Aesir uh, Nordic Ascendant card and then get him back to the field. So the only Nordic Ascendant that we're running is Valkyrie, so that's the only out that you have to bring him back. However, when he's special summoned, you also get to draw a card. Moving on to the Exceeds, of course. Our first level 1 Exceed, we have Slack and Magician. Our level 10 Exceed... We have Super Can, I'll wait for it. There we go. We have Gustav Max. Our level 1 Link Monster, Link Karibo. And then we're running 2 Gulveg of the Nordic Ascendant. I'll hold the 1 card because it seems like the glare is kind of there intensely. Now, uh, Gulveg is really the best card that you're going to be going for. And you're really going to try to get this card out each and every turn. Unless you have enough Fortune Lady cards to run just the pure Fortune Lady combo for the deck. So you have the 2 outs in this ultimate deck either Gulbeg or Every. So either one of these two cards you're going to be using uh, depending on the type of duel that you're going up against. Now Gulbeg effects states, and it's a lot of text, it says that if this card is Link Summoned, you can banish up to three cards from your hand field, or sorry, from your hand or field, and if you do, special summon that many Nordic monsters from your deck in defense position. So you're mainly going to go for three because you can't use her to synchro summon and you're trying to get either Loki, Thor, or Odin out within the first turn. Now while she points to one of those Aesir monsters, that monster cannot be targeted for effects and while that Aesir monster is on the field and pointing in her direction as well, she can't be targeted for attacks. Basic again fairy card, but you can send it to the grave by just sending one uh, level 5 or lower Nordic monster, which kind of includes all of the Nordics that we have. So that's going to wrap it up for the uh, deck part of the video. I hope you guys join me in for the next part where we actually go over some combos for the Fortune Lady Nordic deck. If you guys have any suggestions, any support as well, I would also love that, love that type of input as well. Please make sure that you support this video by liking and sharing it. Please make sure that you comment in the section down below and also don't forget to subscribe. But that aside, I've been the Artist with a Fro, that my friends is the show. And thank you all for watching.